The following stories are from members of Hanmam Church in South Korea. They aired on a Korean Christian TV network called C Channel and were dubbed in English. Hello, I'm Jay Nam Liu from Hanmam Church in Chincheon. I was a staunch humanist. I believed that not hurting people and having a good relationship with your family was what made you a good person with a good life. My life had been going well, and people said I was a good person. I thought I would be fine living this way for the rest of my life, and I didn't need God. I used to look at people going to church and feel frustrated for them. Here they were, going to church on a Sunday to try to believe in a God they couldn't see when they could just use that time to get some rest. Then I came to believe in the risen Jesus as Lord, gaining heavenly hope and living a joyful life. I'd like to share my testimony with you. I was born in a rural mountain town called Daewang, at the edge of Yangpyeong. I lived there till I graduated from high school. During my middle and high school years, my father rented a room for me near my schools because we lived so far away from them. I wasn't gifted at studying at all. I had perfect attendance during my years in elementary and middle school, but I was always at the bottom of my class. I went into military service a few years after high school. In the Army, I learned to drive, and I worked there as a driver. Driving really suited me. After I was discharged, I got a job as a driver again. It wasn't hard to find a driving job. My boss owned a lot of buildings and was renting them out. About 10 days after I got hired, my boss invited me to a coffee shop and asked me a question. He said, In 15 years, I'll be 60. Will you work for me until then? At that moment, I felt conflicted. I asked him if I could have three days to think about this question. During those three days, I went back and forth between yes and no many, many times. Then I ultimately told my boss, yes, I'll do my best for you. My boss was very happy to hear that and thanked me. After that, he let me be a manager for one of his buildings, too. I felt grateful for his trust, so to do my best for him, I worked day and night without a day off. Five years later, my boss made me the head manager. I served him for 26 years, and now I am working for his son, and happily worked at the same place for 36 years. While I worked, I drank often with the excuse that I need to wind down after work. Before I knew it, I loved drinking and was addicted. During weekends, I would often drive down to see my older brother, my car loaded with alcohol and snacks. We would invite his neighbors over and drink together. I thought drinking was good for socializing. My wife tried to make me quit drinking for a long time, but after a while, she seemed to give up. Then one day, my wife began to learn acupuncture for the sake of our family's health. She said it was a lot of fun, and she would practice on me on the day she did practical training. I felt guilty because I knew my drinking gave her a hard time. So one day, I suggested something to her. I asked her if she wanted to study acupuncture full time. It would be hard work, but if she wanted to do it, I'd support her. My wife said that she was more than willing if money wasn't a problem. I said she should go ahead and my wife immediately prepared to go to school. She was past 40 years old when she entered a technical college to begin her studies. Later on, she went to America by herself to study abroad, where she graduated from a school for oriental medicine and even got a Ph.D. My son was doing his military service at a fire department in Chinchon. The day he was discharged, we had some relatives over because it was a holiday. We had a table set for drinking, and my relatives and I were about to start drinking when my son came to my side, and he said he had something to tell me. At that moment, 
I was reminded of what my wife had told me. She had said that my son had started believing in Jesus while he was in the military, and he was going to church now. I thought, people in church don't drink or smoke. If he's about to tell me not to drink, which I think he is, he and I are cutting ties today. I was completely taken over by this thought. A little while later, my son said, Father, please don't drink too much. Maybe one or two shots at the most. It's not good for your health. I thought, what's this? He's letting me drink? I pretended to be fine in front of my son and said, okay, but inside something felt like it was crumbling to pieces at that moment. I was used to drinking several bottles at a time, and for me, I felt like it would be harder to stop after a couple of shots rather than not drink at all. I thought, okay, I'll show you how strong your dad can be. Starting from today, I'm going to quit smoking and drinking altogether. As soon as this thought came to me, I was filled with joy and strength, and from that day on, I didn't want to smoke or drink anymore. I quit once and for all. That night, my wife told me that my son was traveling all the way to Chinchon in order to go to church. I didn't say anything to that, because I thought it was ridiculous to be going all that way to Chinchon for a church. But every Sunday, my son would come back from church with a smile on his face, and it was extraordinary. I thought that I absolutely had to try visiting this church for myself. I had been grateful because my son was changing. He used to like being alone, but starting at some point, he was becoming active. One Sunday, I tried to go to this church with my wife out of concern for my son. The church members greeted us warmly. Though they were seeing us for the first time, I felt awkward, but also very grateful. A little later, I was at the very first worship service of my life. It was awkward. But I diligently tried singing the praise songs as I followed along with the lyrics on the big screen. Then suddenly, something escaped from my eye. I felt self-conscious. So I touched it and discovered that it was a tear. It felt like a tear that had been sitting there, waiting to come out for a long time. The pastor was preaching, and a few more of those tears escaped from me during that time. I wasn't feeling anything in particular, but the tears came out anyway. At the same time, I felt happy for some reason, and I said to myself, this is so strange. Throughout life, I believe that brothers should have strong ties to each other. My brother is 10 years older than me, and I always believed that I should not make him feel uncomfortable in any way. That's why I always went to every family gathering and ancestor worship rituals. I thought that was the very way to love my brother and be decent. After my first service at church, I didn't remember the details of the message, but for some reason, I was just happy. At the same time, I was reminded of my brother, who lived in Yangpyong. My wife and I went straight to Yangpyong with joyful hearts. Whenever I visited him on the weekends, he'd lend me his other house for us to stay in. I asked my wife to pray for us there, and I went to go see my brother by myself. I told him, I went to church for the first time in my life today. I'm going to believe in Jesus from now on. My brother smiled and said, okay. My brother had been Catholic for some time. I didn't want any conflicts with my brother due to religious issues. So I told him once again, I'm going to believe in Jesus. Then he said, that's fine. And I said, I'm going to a Protestant church. Then he said, that's fine with me, and smiled again. I was so grateful to God for that. The third time I went to Sunday service at church, the pastor preached about 1 Corinthians 10, 20, 21. 
On that day I heard the message clearly. I heard the passage that sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons. After the service was over, my wife and I immediately headed over to my brother's house in Yangpyeong again. As soon as I saw my brother, I joyfully said, starting from this Thanksgiving, I won't be worshipping our ancestors anymore. Then my brother said, What are you saying? Are you saying that you won't even make sacrifices to our mom and dad? So I said, Yes. Then he said, Okay, so let's say you go to heaven and all that. You won't be worshipping our parents? So I told him, It's in the Bible. Here, look, I'll show you. Then my brother got angry and said, do whatever you want, and left. That was how, after I set foot in church, I told my brother that I would believe in Jesus and not worship ancestors anymore because of a joy I couldn't explain. I believed that it was the work of the Holy Spirit that I was able to do that, even when I didn't know anything about God's Word. Amen. A few weeks later, my wife and I went to a small church worship service. The small church leader did her best to tell us that Jesus has risen again. She looked up Bible passages about it for us. But inside, I was having doubts. How could a dead person rise back to life? When the small church leader saw me being silent, she said, You believe that General Sun Shin Li existed in history, right? But how can you believe that without having seen him for yourself? That moment I thought, well, of course I believe he existed. He made the turtle-shaped battleships, doesn't she know that? <laughs> A moment later, the small church leader showed me copies of printed materials as she told me that, just like General Sun Shin Li was a historical figure, the resurrection was a historical event, and it was recorded in encyclopedias and textbooks. I thought, well, if the resurrection is a historical fact, I have to believe it. Then one Sunday, the pastor preached about a passage in the book of Acts. He said that God had given everyone a proof they could believe, and he said that this proof was Jesus' resurrection. When I heard the word proof, I looked at this passage again. That was when I realized what an enormous event the resurrection was. All that time, I had heard of the resurrection so many times. But this was the day when I finally heard it together with the word proof. God said that faith comes from hearing, and that really applied to me. Through Jesus' resurrection as proof, I could believe, without a doubt, that God is alive at this very moment. Amen. After that, the pastor said the sin was not believing in Jesus. He said that we should repent this sin and believe, so I prayed to God right away. Looking back, I realized that I had been living as my own Lord instead of believing in Jesus. He had come to this world for our sins, died on the cross, and risen again. Three days later, in order to become my Lord, he was alive even now. But I hadn't believed in him. I only said Jesus was my Lord. And the reality was, I was the Lord myself. I repented the sin of not believing in Jesus and received him into my heart as Lord. Amen. All at once, I can see how I carried all the burdens myself and lived a tiresome life as my own Lord. No matter how well I served others, was praised, never had a bad thing said about me, and lived like a decent person, if I didn't believe in the risen Jesus in my heart as Lord, I couldn't go to heaven. Instead, I would end up in hell, the final destination, for someone whose Lord was himself. I became truly desperate. I don't talk much, and I am shy so I had a hard time having conversations with people. Still, I came to boldly share the gospel first with my brothers and my relatives. 
At a school reunion, I very politely asked some of my friends for a few minutes of their time. And then I said to them, Friend, let us believe in the risen Christ and go to heaven together. Two of my friends believed in Jesus that day. A lot of our friends would visit us at the spare house in Yangpyeong that my brother had given me. I didn't hesitate to share about the risen Christ with them and give them gospel flyers. Even at work, I shared about the risen Jesus with my longtime co-workers, and when I did, I felt so happy. I am grateful to be sharing this precious gospel with the people I cherish the most. After believing in Jesus as my Lord, I came to serve my brother and my family members with a deeper love. There is a limit to how much I can serve others with my own strength. But with the heart that Jesus gave me, I embraced each soul in my heart and couldn't help but love them. My health was suffering due to my drinking, but God has restored it. And I am as healthy as a young man. I'm still working too. People often think I'm older because of my white hair. But I'm probably about 20 years younger than what you think I am. (laughs) Because I put my hopes in the internal kingdom, I am not at all offended when people mistake my age. I want to live my best for the Lord and His gospel where I am, with all the strength He has given me. My boss wants me to work until I am 70. As the word says, all I have done is serve my boss as I would serve the Lord. All I did, I did for the Lord. And it is God's grace that he added everything else for me. Throughout my life, I was praised for being a decent person due to my humanism. But now, I want to be a good, loyal servant before God. I want to live my life as a witness of the resurrection who bears the Lord's mission of sharing about the risen Christ. Thank you. If you'd like to see more stories about how the gospel changed lives, visit us at facebook.com slash HMUOnlyJesus or Google us at HMUOnlyJesus.